after the Fantastic Four opened a portal to the negative zone in search of antiparticles, they encountered Annihilus, a vicious, raving, and paranoid insectoid creature ruling over the negative zone, aided by his most prized possession, the Cosmic Control Rod. Annihilus has waged an all-out war on every living thing in the universe, for it's the only way he can ensure nothing can ever threaten his life or his precious Cosmic Control Rod. So let's take a look at this Cosmic Control Rod. It's a buff, for starters, so it can be removed. Annihilus gains the Cosmic Control Rod at the start of the fight. Whenever the opponent activates a Nullify, Fate Seal, or Stagger ability, the effect is purified and the Cosmic Control Rod is removed for 10 seconds. He is immune to Incinerate, Frostbite, Cold Snap, and any effect that lowers or locks power. While Taunted, gain true accuracy, unblockable, and unstoppable. So, the rod needs to be active for all of these benefits to be deployed for Annihilus. They, there's some really awesome benefits um, in many circumstances that you might be able to use. The last bullet, the Taunted um, effect, can come in quite handy, especially in certain circumstances um, in Alliance War, Alliance Quest. There's a lot of different scenarios where you may want that. Um, but I'm not 100% certain that everyone really loves this character so much. So let's dive in a little bit as to why they hate him first. Because we all know that he can really, really, really turn the tides of a fight if you don't know exactly how to counter him. So let's take a look at some of the more challenging impacts that he has on us. Obliterating Strikes. This and the next section of Annihilus' kit are the two most annoying things in the world. So we're going to start with Obliterating Strikes. While the Cosmic Control Rod is active, all attacks have a 60% chance to be an Obliterating Strike. Obliterating Strikes are not affected by Ability Accuracy Reduction. Keep that in mind. Obliterating Strikes have a 100% chance to inflict an armor break, reducing armor rating by, it's an X percentage, but in this particular example it's 22222 for five seconds, so it's a five second armor break. Annihilus is immune to incoming stun debuffs while launching an obliterating strike. This is where he can become quite annoying because if you attempt to parry him, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't because you have a 60% chance to not parry. If he is going to fire off an obliterating strike, which 60%, that's good odds for him, your parry is not necessarily going to work, so he has an upper hand in most circumstances. Now, the armor breaks are important because of the amount of times he is going to attempt to attack. He's very aggressive. He's got that venom level AI where he's constantly trying to hit you. He also has a very significant knockback. Whether or not he's hitting you with a stun immune strike, which is an obliterating strike for future reference, he will knock you back even if you're blocking, and it's not a stun immune. He will push you to the wall by default. That is his goal. He wants to get you to the wall. We're going to talk a little bit about why he wants to get you against the wall in a little bit, but that is his ultimate goal, to get you as a an attacker against the wall. When he is on defense or in any, any type of node, he is going to try to get you against the wall. And when he's stun immune, he's definitely got the upper hand. Now, the most important facet of this is these are not affected by ability accuracy reduction. So he will always and always, always have this available to him, even if you're immune to things like armor break. Even if you nullify the cosmic control rod, the obliterating strikes do not go away. They're simply paused for a temporary period of time. He will gain the control rod back and, again, back into his form of trying to obliterate you. In addition to the obliterating strikes, there is another facet that makes Annihilus really annoying. This is actually the more annoying piece of it, and that is his stifle mechanic. So whenever Annihilus would inflict an armor break, he also has a 100% chance to inflict stifle, which reduces offensive power gain by 9% for you for 4 seconds. While the opponent is stifled, the first medium attack that he throws in a combo removes one of those stifles and generates a fury buff, increasing his attack by an X percentage for 0.9 seconds. So essentially, his next attack is going to have a fury on top of it. 
If the opponent dashes back while stifled, Annihilus removes one stifle and gains one unstoppable, lasting 1.1 seconds. And that, my friends, is probably the most favorite thing that we have in the MCOC community, that unstoppable buff that he gets. And that is why I wanted to share this analysis uh, with you today, because you can get around that without every possible counter in the game. There's many different ways to get around it. But before we do that, let's talk about what happens if you can remove his Cosmic Control Rod. That's the It's Mine uh, segment here. When the Cosmic Control Rod is removed, Annihilus gains three Fury buffs, each increasing his attack by an X percentage, which is a little bit higher than most. It's, in this case, it's 481.2 for 10 seconds. So it's a much longer Fury. It doesn't go away very quickly. This is designed to kind of be his backup just in case all of his other tools go away. So if you're using him on attack and you lose your Cosmic Control Rod, know that you're going to gain three Furies instantly. Very, very handy. It's not easy to gain Furies as a Nihilus as an attacker. We're going to cover that in another piece, but ultimately, that is a backup mechanic for him just in case he gets in trouble. So why does a Nihilus want to get you up against the wall? And it's in his signature ability. Tremble before me. This is a passive ability, and if he's awakened you might be in trouble if he gets you up against the wall. While Annihilus' opponent's back is near a wall, Annihilus gains one passive aptitude buff, increasing the potency of all fury, armor up, and precision buffs by an X percentage. Now, in my example, it's a very low percentage, but it can go pretty high. The other piece of this is while his back is against the wall. So if you can corner him, he also gains a benefit. While Annihilus' back is near a wall, he gains a passive block penetration buff, allowing all attacks to ignore an X percentage of the opponent's block proficiency. So he will shut down your ability to block his attacks, and by default, with his other components to his kit, you want to block, you don't want to dash back, because if you dash back, he goes unstoppable. So you're trying to stand there and block as much as you can, unless he's throwing a heavy, and then you're dashing back. So... Annihilus has a lot to him that gives him the upper hand in many different areas of the battlefield that we face, but he also has a lot to him that's working against him, and ultimately is shutting down the control rod and keeping it shut down. A lot of Mystic Champs have that ability, so that's the, that's the easy one. You can get around his Stifle debuffs as well. I'm going to show you how to do that in um, an example here in a moment. But before we do that, let's take a look at his special attacks. So for start, special one. Each of his special attacks have a piece of his particular mechanic puzzle that allows him to build toward the next one. So Annihilus is not a ramp up champ. He is what I would call a seesaw champ. And what I mean by that is he can twist and change the flow of the fight very quickly he can turn you on your back really fast he can corner you very easily all of these mechanics are working in his favor and the special attacks if he begins to throw them even if you block some of them some of them won't necessarily work in your favor and the special one is probably the more dangerous of them so special one each hit refreshes all stifled debuffs on the opponent the final hit pauses the duration of all stifles for 6 seconds. Any paused stifles on the opponent increase Annihilus' offensive power gain by 9%. So this is the one you want to avoid at all costs. You do not want to get hit by this special attack at all. If you do, you are really in trouble because now you have paused stifles. His power gain is through the roof for whatever the number is of stifles that he has that you have on you. So you can have up to 12 at any given time. And if you have 12 stifles, multiply that by 9% power gain. That's a lot. That's almost an insane node on top of a just default champion. So you have to keep that in mind when you're fighting him. You don't want to get hit by this attack at all. Now, the special two is not easy to evade. So a lot of people prefer to evade the special one because it only has one projectile. It's two physical hits and then one projectile. So we'll take a look at the special one and we'll go on to the special two. 
Special Attack 2. When activating this special, Annihilus consumes every stiple on the opponent, each generating one fury, increasing attack rating by an X percentage, in this case 360.9, for 12 seconds. Now, this is his burst damage. So if you're using Annihilus as an attacker, this is part of his power loop. This is where you're going to want to cycle. And I'll show you that in a little bit, but ultimately it's not very dangerous if he's a defender because they're 12 second furies and you can remove them, you can nullify them, you can get rid of them pretty easily. So this is the one that I prefer to push him to, personally. And like I said, his special two is a little bit more difficult to evade. However, it's not as dangerous because if you do get hit, it's removing all the stifles. So it takes away a little bit of his upper hand and only gives him more attack. So unless he's a mini boss, which he's about to be on map seven, uh, he may not be as crazy feeling in the in the fight for you if you push him to the sp2 but you got to go with what's more comfortable for you so practice both and see which one is easier for you to avoid special attack three now this one's the money maker if you're in a longer fight and you're using annihilus as an attacker annihilus inflicts the opponent with 10 stifle debuffs each reducing offensive power gain for nine per by nine percent for four seconds until the opponent has zero stifles remaining, the duration of stifle debuffs is increased by 125%. So this goes for every future stifle that you add to your opponent until they deplete to zero. So the goal at this point is to play super aggressive, keep them on at all times, even if that means you have to use your SP1 at one point to pause them to get a little bit more of a timer. Remember, you get an extra six seconds every time you use that SP1 for any stifles that are active. Now, if you pause a stifle that has the extended duration, you have the six seconds, but you also now have the extra duration from the SP3 on top of that. So that is part of your power loop. Now, the key to this particular attack, especially if you're fighting against the Nihilus, is that it doesn't hit very hard. It is not a, it's, it's more of a mediocre SP3. So some champs don't have to have a mechanic built in to tank it. Again, unless he's a mini boss or something on a pretty high powered node, you can take an SP3 and live. Unless he has a significant amount of furies on top before he launches it. So don't push him to an SP3 unless you're sure you can tank it. Something to keep in mind. So now let's take a look at who I believe is one of the best counters for Annihilus in the game in the current meta, and that is Thing. Now, he's not a Mystic Champ, but he does have an amazing Nullify capability built into his kit, which is why I think he's one of the best. He is tanky. He can handle a lot of the damage that's thrown at him. And in this particular fight, it's a, it's a duel. I have a rank four Thing. Now, I don't even have Suicides on. Um, I want to share what happened in this fight and why it works so well and why you should consider using Thing in the future when you are up against an Annihilus. Again, you the ultimate goal is to get rid of the control rod. Now, in this example, he died before the control rod was really an issue, but the goal here is to get as high a number of rock stacks as you can. You want to get above 15 first. And Annihilus gains an Unstoppable, but so does Thing if you're above 15. And you noticed in the corner he hit me, but his Unstoppable ran out before mine did. So I was able to hit him back. And I began my combo while he was still Unstoppable. So he hit me, I went Unstoppable, I hit him, and now he's Unstoppable, so he countered one more time. So he got a second hit in. Now my second combo hit followed immediately because... I'm unstoppable, mine lasts longer, and I'm a tank, so I'm not going to take a whole lot of damage there. It's going to continue to give me more rock stacks on top of that, and then I'm going to push him out of the wall. And it's very easy to build rock stacks with Thing when you're up against a wall. You can parry him, even if he's stun immune, you still parry, you want to get those five rock stacks at a time, and you want to get to an SP2. And the reason you want to get to an SP2 is because Thing's SP2 is a, a powerhouse that's unblockable at 15 rock stacks. And if you're at 20, you're going to stun the opponent for four and a half seconds. So now you have complete control over the whole flow of the fight. But also, all of his special attacks, every single one of them, 
So you don't need to use an SP2 to do this. In a longer fight, you can use an SP1 if you need to. But all of his special attacks have the ability to nullify an unstoppable buff. And keep it off for 8 seconds. Ta-da! So Thing is an amazing counter for Annihilus. He can shut it down. He can out-damage him. And when rocks hit rocks or unstoppable hits unstoppable, the effect is literally just two champions with zero knockback and whoever has the longer ability to stand wins. And again, when things unstoppable last longer, you're not going to have to worry because analysis is only 1.1 second. Not very long at all. All right, that's my analysis on Annihilus. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button below if you did. Please subscribe if you want to keep up, and I will see you next time.